Good evening and welcome to episode 354 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Uzamandu Kumalo. It's a bit of a rocky start this evening as we kickstart the Monday edition at all our new viewers uh, who I know are not watching us on Instagram or on Facebook. We know that there's a global uh, shut down, if we could call it that, or that it's down. Facebook, uh, Instagram, and WhatsApp are all down. And so I know many of you who tend to watch us on Facebook and Instagram currently do not have access to us. But if anything, all our YouTube viewers are able to watch us. And I know some of the top fan gang members on the other platforms are probably feeling it. They're already tweeting us uh, saying that Facebook is down. How will they get uh, their daily dose of the private or property? podcast well we're still here the show always must continue we even started a little late it's almost as though it's just uh, you know global goal when it even comes to signal but the show always needs to continue and talking about the show continuing you know of course you can tune into incredible programs across private properties social media pages every single weekday at 8 p.m as we kickstart monday you can catch chad on the home shoppers show and he comes to your screens every mondays and fridays where he brings us exquisite tours of incredible properties that you can find on www.privateproperty.co.z things agriculture And of course, on Wednesdays, Esty Clarsen brings you the first time home buyer show, which is always in conversation with people who've not only walked that first time home buying journey, but have gone on to grow their property portfolios from strength to strength. 
Now, as many of you, competition, uh, particularly on our Facebook page, the pinned post on our Facebook page, and every single weekday uh, on the show right here with myself as Amandunga Kumalo, we've been announcing who the lucky winners were. Because we know that Facebook, because we've now reached the big, bold target that we have said that we had set for ourselves, but we don't want to disadvantage anyone. So tomorrow, that's when we'll do the unveiling of who the potential lucky winner is, and really hope that they're going to be watching uh, so that they can claim their prize. So because we know that we unfortunately won't be able to have many of you being able to, uh, you know, raise your hand if your name is, is is called we're going to move that over to tomorrow evening because we want to make sure that you are able to walk away with this cash prize well uh this evening we're looking at something that we were meant to look at uh, if you remember about two weeks ago but i think you know things being the way that they were we had to move things a little bit and of course the conversation will still continue we're looking at the investor of the year awards a conversation with us about this this evening. I'm joined by Ukali Musahane, who's a popular entrepreneur, Shili Boy Mutibo, who's a co-founder at Intergen, as well as Ben Malibil, who's an intern real estate agent. And I'm going to go straight to my first guest. First, a good evening to all of my guests, and thank you so much for joining us on the show this evening. Uh, I want to start with you, Kali. I think for people who probably don't know what Investor of the Year awards, perhaps take us through what the Investor of the Year Awards are what the aim for the awards, you know, primarily is. Um, well, thank you very, very much, Azama. I'm super excited to be on the show. I've been looking forward to this. Um, so, Investor of the Year Award, or rather, Property Investor of the Year Award, is an initiative that was started by our CEO, which is um, Andrew Walker, a few years ago. And this was kind of an initiative set out to reward and award um, individuals in the property space. So what would happen is that a lot of people would be kind of hesitant to maybe start their property journey because they're not entirely sure what they do of life can actually end up being awarded for something that is amazing and being innovative in how they go on to their property journey. For example, the assumption is that you always have to be like a big developer or you have to have like a huge property portfolio, but you could literally have purchased your first property. And it's something as small as a cottage or um, a bachelor apartment or maybe, you know, a one or two bedroom. But if you have an interesting way or an innovative way at which you acquired maybe the funds or an innovative way at which you structured it or any of those things, we are looking for people like that. And so how it happened, it just it was literally Andrew trying to give incentive and kind of motivate individuals who have um, come across hurdles and overcome them and been like, you did an amazing job. And for that, actually, you know, you should be awarded for that. And I think, you know, Kali, I, 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 one of the, the, the realities with property is there, there are many, uh, I always say there are many challenges and barriers, but there are also many wins yeah. for people who, uh, you know, opt to take the, the, the property route. And and I'm keen to hear from you. I mean, Interchain is one of the sponsors for the, and, and I think the role that you see yourselves playing, um, being one of the partners who are going to be pulling off the awards. Um, thank you so much, Zama. And like Kali, I'm very excited to be back on this show. Um, I think as Intergen, we we are proud to be associated with this brilliant, brilliant, innovative um, uh, uh, solution to, to the challenges that the country is faced. I mean, we, we're speaking about youth um, unemployment, high youth unemployment. And, and earlier on, Kali mentioned that you actually don't need to be a big shot uh, to be playing in the property space. And I think... This is where we are passionate about to say um, is, uh, getting into the space using other people's money, other starting as sourcing agents. So being part of the awards, we actually get to see uh, individuals, uh, particularly youth, the way, which is where we are actually excited about where we seeing them being creative. Like Kali said, how are they structuring uh, uh, these deals? How creatively do they actually uh, structure these deals and using other people's money? And how they optimize financing uh, structuring and which is where as intergen you will know that in, in tax and legal planning within property space so those are some of the things that we actually look into and actually also empower through the feedbacks that we give um the the, the, the guys who enter 
for these awards and we give them feedback to say listen be on a lookout on this and this be on a lookout on this how did you actually resolve these challenges particularly on structuring how do you preserve this wealth and and i'll, I'll tell you one thing that uh, we are also more passionate about it that we speak a lot of financial inclusion but what does financial inclusion means and through this process of the awards as people enter these awards these are some of the things we actually i now to just say do you understand the responsibilities as a director for that matter as a property investor you might be buying using a company but do you understand the responsibility of being a director mm. believe that financial inclusion it's not going to happen if someone does not even understand the values and the responsibilities of being a director for that matter. And as an intergen with expertise in that field, these are some of the things that we take through these guys you know, and, of course, empower them at the end of through the process. Mm, mm, mm. And I think, you know, Shiliboy, when you talk about um, the young people, particularly those, of course, who've entered the awards and the different deals that they've structured, uh, I want to bring ben, uh, ben in rather, Ben Malipile, who's an intern real estate agent, of course, one of the young people who have entered uh, the awards and and I'm sure also waiting with bated breath for later on in the year uh, when the awards happen to see uh, whether he's going to you know walk away with the prize. But before we even get to that, Ben, I think perhaps share with us the, the deals that you entered uh, for the awards. All right. Um, hi, Zama. Uh, thank you for hosting me. Uh, so I actually entered two deals. So one is an Airbnb in Marshalltown. So what we did there is we did a rent to rent. So we rented from a landlord. And then um, it's not like selling onions at the corner. I mean, if you to do that, all you have to do is buy onions, get a corner and sell. But now with property, there's a lot that goes into, as young people, um, and uh, education about these things. It's very easy to get bent or very easy to be demotivated. And not years ago when I was 21, and I actually only got my first deal when I was 24. So it took three years to just buy one property. So it's that's that's just an example of how tough it is. Um, and I mean, I was, I was on it every day, like, you know, what Shili Boy mentioned, structuring and asset protection and asset preservation. I was studying those things day in, day in, day in and day out, even without owning a single piece of property, because I knew that I want to do this for the long term or for, for a full generation and pass it on to future generations to come. So in order for me to do that, I mean, I need a wealth of knowledge and professionals like Shili Boy to help us guide uh, which which entities to use, which entities not to use. I mean, I might be confusing other young people talking about all of this, but yes, that's 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 property and that's how it's done. Mm -mm -mm. And of course, if you're joining us this evening, I am in conversation uh, with U Kalim Sohani, Ben Malapila, and Shuli Boy Mutiba mm -hmm. as we look at the Investor of the Year Awards and championing the youth. I know that many of you at home who typically would be watching us, whether it's on Facebook or on Instagram, don't have access to us this evening. Uh, we're only coming to you on YouTube because, uh, you know, the other platforms forms are unfortunately down uh, i know that many of you are already having withdrawal symptoms have been seeing the tweets that you've said that you've been sending uh, through to us so you're very likely going to be catching up with this conversation uh, on the other platforms later on but Chili Boy, I want to bring you in. Uh, I think, you know, Ben touched on, of course, what he's learned uh, along his property journey. Perhaps share with us some of the mistakes that young people in particular tend to make when we look at their property journey. And I already started, you know, touching on some of them. But I think for those who are either about to get into real estate or those who are sometimes even in, because I think the reality, is even when we're in real estate, there's still mistakes that we make along the way. Perhaps share with us just some common mistakes mistakes that you find um, particular people making along their property journey? Yeah, look, I think, I think uh, rather um, we, we look at what needs to be done because reading, and I like that, I must, I must say, uh, uh, great work, great work, Ben. And I think every young person that is actually uh, watching this should be learning that, that they need to invest in knowledge. But another thing that I want to take away 
and kind of um, say, it's actually not tough uh, to enter into a property space. And it's just a mere lack of consolidated and filtered information that is readily, readily available for anyone who enter the space. And, and I think the likes of Ben and the likes of the young people that might be watching this, they're actually privileged because, I mean, if I recall in my youth when we tried to enter the space, the ecosystem like Saben and um, Investor of the Air Awards, uh, you know, the TPA, Property Academies, they were not there. You know, you, 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 you made these mistakes, you rush into the things, you do not understand the legalities and like uh, now I'm trying to answer your question, Zama, because there's emotions involved. You, you know, you wanna you wanna you wanna feel like you're a property investor. You want that big uh, deal. You know, you 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 wanna be, uh, tell people that I bought my property, and you end up end up overpaying for that matter. And one of those things is also because you don't have don't know that for you to actually even buy that particular property, you need to confirm these values of properties you might be using places like tpn lifestone report and for that matter you don't even have the coach the likes of entries who holds your hands and, and 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 show you that this is how you negotiate this is the due diligence the otp for that matter how to structure the otp which is where the likes of intergen comes into place to say okay this is how you you sign otp you shouldn't just take the otp that you are given and say listen Here's an OTP, you need to sign it. No, negotiate OTP is not a standard. Those are some of the mistakes that someone who's uh, sort of um, impatient, who wants to get an, into the game of property, they tend to make, they tend to overlook small things like that. And they come back, they buy themselves, by, they buy you, by the way. So, so I think for me, uh, it would be that, listen, invest in education, surround yourself in platforms like private property, um, uh, webinars like this, uh, invest in, there's uh, so much, uh, YouTube channels uh, these days that you can actually uh, consume that information and yeah empower yourself so that you don't make uh, these mistakes. Mm -mm -mm. And Kali, I, mean, I want to bring you in when we look at the awards. Have to take us through what some of the categories are and how people at home who may want to uh, you know, join, whether or, you know, or even attend, how they can go about doing so. Um, thank you very much for that. With regards to attendance, um, it's going to be a hybrid. So we're going to have partly live and then we're going to have partly online. So in order for you to buy your tickets online or live, you would need to go to the Sapin website, which is www.sapin.com. Um, and then with regards to uh, entering, unfortunately, the entries are closed for a uh, potential uh, entrance or people who wanted to enter but you know it's a yearly thing so please 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 you can absolutely enter next year but unfortunately the entries are closed with regards to that now we're just literally finalizing um the the finalists for the actual event that's going to be in november um and in terms of the deals so as i stated like anybody could enter you could have a bachelor apartment and you would genuinely you would have been liable to enter there wasn't a specific criteria to say oh only these people with x amount of you know properties are allowed to enter um but we do have a judging that does separate so it's kind of like you separate the 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 um, uh, the newbies, intermediate, and the large scale. So I think it would be a bit um, disheartening if you were competing against somebody who bought a block of flats and you just you just bought um, a two bedroom apartment. So there is categories. However, in terms of entry, anybody could have entered. Unfortunately, right now the entries have closed. Mm -mm -mm. And, uh, you know, before we wrap up, I'm, I'm going to do a quick round with all of my guests in terms of tips for young people who want to get into real estate. Uh, let me start with you, Kali. I mean, any tip, uh, and it could even be one tip that you'd like to share with young people who are either looking to get into real estate or, of course, uh, are already in real estate and probably looking to grow and expand um, their property business. Um, the one fundamental one is that you need a network. You need a network. You need a network. I think um, a lot of the time, maybe also the frustration from people, especially young people who want to get into the space, is that you do not have an ecosystem that enables you and allows you to understand 
um, how things work. So possibly with with um, uh, uh, my co panelists, maybe it took him three years. Possibly because he was he was unfortunately doing it alone because he did not understand that there's different spheres and ecosystems that will absolutely hold your hand and walk with you on this journey. So places like Sapin. Absolutely. Um, also like the property academy, which is like coaching. So those would be the networks that you need because you can have access to pretty much everybody. You can have access to people like um, um, uh, Chili Boy in regards to to uh, finances and structuring. You can have access to uh, prime lawyers like, like Bruno Samao. You can have coaches um, in terms of the SAP and ecosystem. So the one thing I will honestly give advice to is that you need a network. If you want to go far, you go with people. If you want to go fast, you go alone. Mm -mm. And Shirley Boy, on your end, any tip for youngsters when it comes to the uh, property game? Look, I think Kali's spot on. I mean, it's an ecosystem, ecosystem, ecosystem. And, and, and within that, it's also a pointless for you to be belonging to ecosystem, but at the end of the day, you don't execute because if you don't execute and you've got cold feet, you actually might belong to ecosystem for the next 15 years, but you haven't achieved anything. Pull a trigger. You're going to make, me, you're gonna make mistakes, but you learn from there. But by virtue of you having been within the ecosystem and having assembled a team, like Kali said, uh, having the right to provided within the ecosystem, you're on the right track. Mm. And uh, Ben, I think I, I, I deliberately wanted to end off with the youngster. Uh, any tip from your end uh, for fellow young people when it comes to the real estate game? Well, the more you learn, the more you earn. So, um, I mean, think about, let's say, what for whatever profession, let's say you want to be a lawyer like Shilly Boy. You go to law school for four years, then after four years, then you start with your articles and then you get an, a meeting as an attorney. I'd, I'd say the, the process is also the same if you want to be a professional real estate investor. First, go to your SAPIN, go to your property academy, slowly graduate from there to now owning your own portfolio. Because if you, if, if you jump the education phase, um, there's a huge possibility that you'll only be able to buy one or two properties in your lifetime. But if you invest in the education, then you know you can be the next Andrew Walker and have over 500 deals in your lifetime. Mm. So yes, that's my piece of advice. The more you learn, the more you earn. Mm. And that's actually such a great note to leave it on. I think as, as, as young people, uh, I mean, I started property myself uh, I'm, and I'm still young. I'm still classified as youth in this country. Uh, I can certainly attest to the different things that we can learn and something like the podcast definitely does make it easier for you to uh, get as much knowledge. You go to privateproperty.co.za and get exposed to different kinds of, uh, you know, facts that help you along your journey. Uh, but I will say it's not easy. I think, uh, you know, property is, is a very difficult game to get into. The barrier of entry is quite intense, especially depending on what exactly it is that you're trying to do. So even as you learn as much as you can, do cut yourself a bit of slack because it's a, it's a, it's a long journey. And when you take a long-term view when it comes to property, it certainly does make it easier. Uh, and, and it's unfortunate that it's not like other asset classes or any kind of work where, you know, you make money easily and quickly and you kind of go to the next one so do take a long-term view it, it, it has a way of of how down uh, of course the big one of the biggest tech giants uh experiencing uh, an outage there not having access to instagram to whatsapp and facebook so because we've been running that exciting competition on our facebook page we will be back with it tomorrow though and announcing who the lucky winner of that uh, prize is i think we're just gonna roll it over right we're gonna add that 500 rands for tomorrow and whoever's going to walk away with the cash tomorrow is going to have it have plus 100 rands uh, because we unfortunately couldn't announce the winner this evening well that's it from myself for Zamantongwa Kumalu here on the Private Property Podcast I'll be back on your screens tomorrow evening at 7pm uh, you can catch Chad on the Home Shoppers Show later this evening at 8pm until then hoping you're staying home and staying safe